For decades, young men and women in the U.S. had similar political ideologies on average. That's changed over the last six years. A Financial Times analysis of Gallup data found American Gen Z women are 30 percentage points more liberal than their male counterparts. Women aged 18 to 29 take more progressive positions on issues like immigration and racial justice than young men do, even as the sexes still roughly see eye to eye in older generations. Alice Evans is a visiting fellow at Stanford, and she joins us now to tell us why that gender divergence is happening in the United States and also, interestingly, in many other countries in the world. Uh, Dr. Evans, okay, why is this happening? At, well, I'll just start there. Why? So I think the evidence points to economic, technological, and also cultural changes. So younger generations tend to have what we call zero-sum mentalities. They believe that your success becomes at my expense. And that seems to be associated with growing up during weak conditions. Also, technologically, news media increasingly highlights, one, negative events, terrible atrocities. And also in Western media since the 2010s, there's been much more attention to racial and gender bias. And then all that gets amplified by social media filter bubbles. As we self-select into information and news that appeals to us, we then get cocooned in these echo chambers of agreement, righteous resistance, and very little debate. And then because corporate algorithms want to keep us hooked on social media, they feed us one, content that pleases us, that appeals to our priors, and also, you know, shocking examples of scandals of our foes. So all that is encouraging ideological polarization, especially as younger people spend more time on their phones, less time in the real world with other people that actually probably agree with them in real life. And then seizing on all those economic and cultural technological changes, cultural entrepreneurs try to tell their story and, and garner wider popularity. And by cultural entrepreneurs, you're talking about basically influencer, influencers seeing this madness and saying, well, I might as well make money off of it by poking at it. Yes, exactly. People like Andrew Tate. So if there are men growing up in economically difficult conditions and feeling resentment towards women getting handouts or foreigners getting handouts, they tell this story that, you know, you're not to blame. It's these women on quotas. Now, this... This f sounds terrible for society. And so what are some of the ramifications of this in the areas of politics, economics, just general uh, healthiness of society? Well, it all depends on what we do about it. But if that ideological polarization continues, you might expect more difficulties for heterosexual love or family formation. You found that the U.S. wasn't the only country with this split. There were divisions in China and then also South Korea. All the same causes or are there idiosyncrasies in those, those countries? Right, so that's a great question. China and South Korea traditionally have very strong sun preference. So men are revered. And even though both countries have become much more gender equal, you know, South Korea's historically high sex ratios men, mean that men face the world's worst dating market. So they're constantly getting rejected, getting re rebuffed, and that feeds into resentment, loss of status, and then they vent online. Meanwhile, Korea has seen massive feminist activism, again, in those social media filter bubbles. So Korean women are becoming much more liberal and egalitarian and feminist, where men are continuing to vent and feel that frustration. So the last question, Alice, is, is there any way this is temporary or that it can be addressed because it feels like it just kicks out the legs from under, you know, the structure of a healthy society? Right. So I think if corporate algorithms are feeding us sensationalist, shocking content and then keeping us cocooned in echo chambers, you know, deluding us with other about what other Americans think, we might want to change that. And, you know, there are all kinds of regulation that could break up those corporate algorithms and break up those filter bubbles. And then we can just start talking to each other again and realizing, you know, building empathy. And maybe a little personal self-restraint as well. We're very grateful for talking to you, Alice Evans. Thanks so much for being with us.